Hi there, this is Mrs. Piper, and I wanted to just uh, go over some finishing touches on uh, putting together your buildings and making sure that you all understand how to put windows into buildings. Now, I touched briefly on them when I talked about this building right here, making sure that the windows that are furthest away are most narrow and that they get larger and larger as you get closer to the viewer. But because I was on this building and because I'm going to be putting um, windows into this one, I'd like to go ahead and share with you how I'm going to go about doing that. Okay, now before we do the windows, let me just remind everybody that every line that goes back in space goes to this one vanishing point. All of the other lines are parallel to the picture plane, which means they either go straight across or straight up and down. So I rotated my paper when I began this building right here and as you can see I put in the sides of the building to the vanishing point. Um, I've got several different layers. Um, I've got several floors that are very wide and then the decorative top of the building will um, come up here at the at the very top and it'll be thinner than the rest of the building. But because I was putting in windows and I started to work on it and then I realized I should probably videotape it, let me go ahead and show you how I put in windows into a large building. I'm going to zoom in. You should still be able to see the vanishing point and the building itself. So my vanishing point is right here and what I did, or what I'm doing, is I want to make a row of four windows. So I'm going to lay my ruler again parallel to the picture plane, and I'm going to mark it for approximately even spaces. Now you could take your ruler and you could measure these, but again, I'm not going to be that precise. So I've laid in four little rectangle or four little lines that are going to become rectangles they're going to become my window and if you'll notice I'm putting a mark on the edge of each one that makes it easier for me to see it when I'm putting in the uh, lines that are vertical which means they're going back in space these are my orthogonal lines I'm touching the vanishing point do you see it up here and I'm putting in this side of the window I'm keeping it with the vanishing point, or meeting the vanishing point. There's my next row of windows. My next row of windows, again, holding steady at the vanishing point, and drawing each line to that vanishing point. So now I have these lines that go back in space, so they go to the one vanishing point. They can become the sides of windows. Now this kind of looks pretty cool just as it is, but if I want to put windows in, I'm going to lay my ruler across. Again, it is parallel to the picture plane, which means it's going straight across, straight up and down, and then I'm going to put the bottom of each window in. So. I would lay my ruler down, put the bottom of each window, and these are a little bit further away so they're going to seem a little bit narrower. And then I'm going to put the space in between the windows, again parallel to the picture plane, straight across. I'm going to erase in between the window sills. And then when I'm done, I'm going to go back over my lines with either a marker or a jet black drawing pencil, whatever I choose. So these are going to be tall windows. I'm laying my ruler down, putting the bottom of each window in, leaving a space and sketching them in. So as you build up each building, some will have vertical windows, some will look glass, some can be uh, very plain, some can look metallic. It's totally up to you. 
What I'm doing is I'm erasing as I go so I can keep track of which is the window and which is the window sill. Kind of reminds me of the UT Tower. Drawing in the lines as I go. You'll notice that they're getting longer as they get closer to the viewer. You can turn your paper at an angle as you're drawing. It makes things a little bit easier to draw the buildings straight or to draw the buildings going up and down. And that will make it a lot easier for you. But I hope in having me illustrate how to do the windows themselves that you'll be getting some ideas for your own buildings. Your windows can have curves they don't have to be rectangular, but as you can see, as they get closer to the viewer, they get larger in size. Again, I'm checking my ruler to make sure it is always parallel to the picture plane. Drawing my window sill and then my windows erasing as I go so that I don't get confused on what's a window and what's the building in between the windows. Okay, now it's going to be at this point where I'm going to stop. I'm going to finish up my windows here and I'm going to let you create your own cityscape. When I'm done drawing mine completely, I'll go over the lines with either my black sharpie or a ballpoint, the lines that I wish to keep. And then how you color it is really up to you. You may use watercolors, you may use colored pencils, crayons, markers, whatever you choose. You do not have to color the buildings at all. You could leave the buildings black and white and just color the sky. So however you wish to finish yours off, is fine with me. I'm going to be showing some examples in this blend lesson so you can get some ideas. But there is how you draw windows into a skyscraper. And I hope that I've shown you enough to really give you some ideas on what you would like to do for your cityscape from a worm's eye view. I hope this helps. Enjoy your drawing. Have a great day.